This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, Secret Treasure Hunt land. I hope you all are doing well. Wanted to cover today another failed operation. And I've had more than a few. And it's been fun, though, and you learn something along the way. So this one was San Francisco. So I want to clarify something. I cut a video where I said uh, Roanoke Island with my girls was failed operation two. That was actually three. So this was the second failed operation. All right. Just want to get that out of the way. <laughs> uh, I love San Francisco. I've told you guys this. And I love just going out there and and. It was awesome hunting these. So I don't consider them failed, but no box. So yeah, I guess technically failed. Uh, <clears throat> in any case, I want to walk through a few things with you here today. Hopefully this helps you not participate in a failed operation. Although, yeah, they can be fun. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. All right. So... San Francisco. Several things I want to cover with you here. What not to do. So that's going to be a real brief little summary. And then I want to walk through the solve and show you where we didn't get it right. Sort of how we got off track. And then I want to just walk you through some of the details of the actual operation. All right. Does that sound okay? Hopefully to you. Okay. Let's jump in. So if you want to get to the wrong spot, here's what you do. Settle for second best. And, and this speaks to an okay fit. And I think the dynamics here are a little hard to understand. But ultimately, I think what it is is we sort of derive a spot. And then we sort of massage the solve into it, right? So in the course of doing that, you will have to take second best you're going to have to take a suboptimal angle and go with it and 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 my encouragement to you in solving these is do not settle for second best second best i think is always wrong so the right fit in my opinion it flows it's elegant it just makes sense you don't have to reach far off the board to make it work okay so when I see these solves out there and there just seems like people are reaching so far. Well, you know, Twain liked this back in 1876 in St. Louis. So that ties back into this puzzle. Like, no, it doesn't. There should be something really on the surface that connects Twain to the puzzle or something right there. Okay. So I, I don't think you have to go far. And that to me is just, it's second best. Or it's such a far off connection that it's probably not right. So find that thing that just really, man, no matter how hard you try to get rid of it, you can't. So I understand you can reach and stretch and get to these other angles that's second best. Don't do that. Get get top dog, top shelf here. Don't settle for second best. It's kiss death. All right. And, and don't have lots of, of painting imagery at your site. And this is how I think... He was telling us or instructing JJP to give you those visual clues. Hey, I'm in the right spot. So in San Francisco, that was the big missing piece for us was we got to a spot and, and theoretically it was, it was right at a battery, but we didn't have the, that imagery in the background. And so we still went for it. And that was somewhat early in this whole process. Now it's like, I will not go to a place for sure unless I can pick up a lot of what I see in the painting at the dig site. And I think there's some debate on this, but, but no, it, it, in San Francisco, yes. Like when we finally got that imagery that we see in the painting from the dig site, then it was like, boom, you know, there can't be any other place. Uh, but in this instance, we didn't have that. And that was very troubling. And you know what? It was right. So can't we tend to make excuses? Well, I, I don't really see uh, any of this, but all this other stuff makes sense. So here I go. No, I think you got to have it all. I think you have to have it all. So don't make excuses and don't settle for not picking up all this imagery in, in the painting at the, at the dig site. And then also my buddy Kurt has been very involved and uh, I sort of roped him in all this. He's been awesome uh, <laughs> buddy to have work on this. 
got to have a team. I think if you're working on this alone, it's just, it's too hard, way too hard for a variety of reasons. And we've talked about this, but he's been my voice of reason in this. And he has actually picked up a couple super key clues that uh, have been really helpful in developing solve ideas. So here in San Francisco was Funston's grave marker. He found that in the national cemetery and it's a, whether or not that's right. And I think it is, it's a great tie. And I don't know if I would have seen that ever and maybe never got to the right spot. So, you know, a second set of eyes <clears throat> talked about this two local teams on the ground. Okay. Gotta have these local people. Okay. I, yeah. You want to go and get all the fame and glory yourself and, and get your own show with Josh. I don't know. I, good luck to you. I just think this is a team effort. Uh, in New York, you know, Tommy and, and Vic, awesome uh, helps uh, there in, in those operations. And, and you know, Tommy pointed out, hey, she's on the uh, Spirit of 76, on the boat, to on the ferry to Staten. That just added this massive confirmation on Von Breesen. And I wouldn't have really thought about that. So anyway, you know, have somebody there that has a clear head that's not as obsessed as you. And not as likely to get enamored with ideas that aren't right. Okay. So that's super key. Have a voice of reason. Nobody wants to be told, no, that's wrong. Or you're in the right spot. Or that doesn't make sense. We don't want to hear that. However, if you really want to find a box, you have to have that. Because there's, it's too easy to get off track. All right. So let's talk about where we went wrong, though. And this is it. So we ended up in Battery Battery Chamberlain down uh, at Baker Beach. And, I, you know, you can see I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures in that. But uh, this one is it's awesome down there. It was I think it was the site of the first Burning Man. That's not my thing. Might be yours. Uh, it's really cool. It's in the Presidio, and it's just get this fog and the views. Uh, but we, we felt, and I'll walk you through this, of why we should be at Battery. There's lots of battery imagery in this one. And we picked a lot of that up because we went there, boots on the ground, and, and was looking around like, wow, here's all these this imagery that matches battery. Got to be at a battery. The eyes, they're so stylized. They really match the schematics when you look at uh, the schematics of the batteries. So anyway, this is Battery Chamberlain. And I promise you it is not in the spot we thought it was here. I promise you. Again, I'm I'm never gonna tell you that. Hey, I hey I dug here. I'm not gonna admit that. I'm gonna tell you I've done an operation, but I'm not gonna tell you that that I've I've dug. So, um, if you're looking for that, I'm not uh, <laughs> not gonna admit it. But I will tell you here, it's not in the spot that we looked at. Okay, you can take that for what it's worth. All right, battery imagery. So these are pictures I took, not this one here. And I sorry, Scott. H. Uh, but this bat, this imagery around the apron here, I, I think it's a dead ringer for a lot of what you see. Like, I think they stored the uh, artillery in, in these areas, right? And you see these, this sort of uh, angled like this over here. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, just uh, adjust the mouse pointer. Hopefully you can see that. I Sometimes it doesn't pick up what I see, but I made the mouse bigger so you can kind of see what I'm pointing to. Uh, but you know, like this here matches this. Um, now we think it's Battery Lancaster, and and those are represented by these three concentric circles that are joined together. So here's another problem: like in Chamberlain, then there's four. There's four turrets, four guns. There's only three here. That doesn't add up. Okay. Uh, this axe, you see this here. Uh, and here, when you start to look at the, the various imagery of, of batteries, you can look at military symbols and that. It, it's very close here. So uh, I, I think you're you're seeing that. And yeah, there's all these batteries. There's like, I don't know, 17 separate batteries around the San Francisco Bay Area. So it's a huge part of this spot. And uh, again, we'll jump into the eyes here. But it, so th this was the thing is we're looking at this and studying the painting. Like, what are these things? This is where we come up, you know, we come up with this. So unlike, let's say, Milwaukee, that's a very hyper-realistic representation of a person's face, it seems. 
this is not right. This is cartoon almost it's illustrative it's cartoonish in a way but it's not real you know this well you wouldn't say oh well, he's trying to really represent a person here so you can see these eyes they're telling us something i think when i look at this stuff and i think your radar has to go off on this when you're looking at the paintings you have to have this extraordinarily curious mind about these things and he's you know jjp it's an incredible vision to and creativity to take something and 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 show it like three different ways, like from a, a map perspective, 2D, 3D, and one thing represents three. So here it's a face, but I, gosh, I think it's I mean, just look at the angles. I mean, it's just spot on. So I think kind of what you're looking at here. This is Battery Lancaster. So again, we're at Chamberlain down the road. Um but I just want to show you why we thought battery. Okay, now as a corollary, as a is a um, you know bookend to San Francisco is New York, and you've got what you would think Fort Wadsworth. It's so similar, right? And I've, I've walked through some of this. The problem with a painting there, not problem, but there's no battery imagery, or it's I think in the sleeves are kind of represent. Uh, battery weed, and then I can't remember the other one right now. But in any case, you just don't have this. You have very specific hints at battery. So that's why we think Von Bree's in Park right next door. And there's reasons uh, that's supported. In any case, so yeah, I'm looking at this, and I'm studying what's going in and around this area. And there's all these batteries. So start looking at the batteries. Gosh, they look similar. So this is what we think this leap was fine and good. And yeah, it is. Um, so uh, here, you know, in 1972, Nixon signed the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. So this wasn't that far off from when Byron would have been there. But, you know, I looked at a few things. I'm just like this whole image of the of the woman here, it, you know, it fits this whole uh, arrowhead imagery, which happens to be National Park Service. So yeah, that made sense to us where you end up in the national park. And people are, ah, oh, it's not in a national park. Show me where it says you can't be in a national park. It says it's in a public area is what it says. So this is nothing about this. People say, oh, you can't dig on federal land. Well, you know, it was wild back then, way more wild than it is today where there's cameras everywhere. And, you know, you touch a blade of grass and somebody's up in arms about it. So, and this was relatively new. So people didn't see this as a you know, national treasure, so to speak. This was a cool area uh, that they turned into this. So, yeah, I think that's the symbolism here. It could be wrong, but, man, it's close. Um, and then we could see, you know, you can just see the outline. You have to in, you have to reverse it, though, to get the map, right? Um that goes through her hair kind of. So this just speaks to, yeah, this area seemingly is important and it matches. So we like that. All right, so walk you through a little bit of this. Stonewall's door. This is 43 and a half, pure 43 and a half. So type in San Francisco 43 and a half. That's what I did. This is what came up. How obscure is 43 and a half? I mean, can you name anything in your life that <laughs> coincides with 43 and a half. It just so happens this is a very famous pier in Fisherman's Wharf. She's pointing to the 40, uh, between the four and the, uh, sorry, the four and the three and a half. And this is sitting down. This is actually Pier 43, but right next door is this, the Bay Cruise, the Red and White Fleet, which is extraordinarily historic and known. Why not? So you can come up with all these reasons why, you know, why not? I don't think they're very good. This seemingly is just on the surface. It's there. Why wouldn't he want to put you in Fisherman's Wharf? Let's say versus GGP. There's nothing going on in GGP. It's a it's a city park that nobody knows about. Yet down here is this incredible Stonewall door that leads to Alcatraz, and then you've got this you know tour of the uh, bay and that. Run with this. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. 
So then people have this. A lot of people. They're at Ghirardelli, the backwards GH. They think it's the Great Highway or something. No. Show me where Great Highway corresponds to this backwards GH. This is so unique to San Francisco. It just makes sense, right? People have this view, this picture I took. Spot on. Why? All right, so directionally, we're starting in Fishman. That seems super logical to me. Like one of the most widely known components and and what people think about and recognize and it's a cool area down there if you've never been it's all touristy but it's really cool so would you want to start you there heck yeah i would so you're moving now up the shore he's giving you the direction i think very clear this is the shoreline solve now some people they want to then cut into ggp because they see this outline in the apron of the park so I think the apron is a combo. It's a yin and yang of uh, the Presidio and GGP. That's where very historic things happened about, you know, with the fires and the earthquake back in 06. But, you know, so you have two data points. It's not a lot. But directionally, like, we're not headed backwards now to Angel Island like some people want to do. Move up the shore. That's where everything is. And by the way, the world's most iconic bridge is just up the road. All right, so sounds from this guy near Aces High, and this is the, uh, you know, the horn. This is the fog horns off the bridge. Okay, oh, go back. Okay, so if I'm like, that's what I did here, folks. That's not that hard, I don't think. So. If he's giving me this direction, why don't I just stay on the shoreline? Is there anything up there that could correspond to this? Sounds from the sky. It has to be the most obvious if you ever go to San Francisco because it's foggy there all the time, any time of the year. And these massive foghorns sitting on top of the bridge, you hear them all the time. I don't think you hear them up in GGP. And you hear sounds from the sky up there? Sure, something, birds, airplanes, I don't know. But this is so iconic and and memorable and a part of San Francisco are these horns that go off all the time. Why not run with that if you can make it work? Just run with that. It's easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. So up here, I think where people are missing this is Chrissy Field. So you got to dig and hunt. And so I'm, I'm like looking up the shore. Is there anything that corresponds to this? I got sounds from the sky. It's pretty easy obvious i think and then chrissy field now so people look at this it's it's not a military airfield anymore it used to be back in byron's time when you research chrissy it was operating as an airfield up until i think the late 70s so right when he would have been there so it would have looked very much like an airport because it was and actually it's named after this military pilot dana chrissy Okay, so is he a military pilot ace? This seems to work. I don't have to go far off the board on Twain like poker and all this. I don't know. Do I? I mean, this is military guys have been flying around here for, for decades. Um, this seems like an easy fit. So in terms of our certainty when we're working on this thing, it's very high that we're on the right spot. We got three like stopping points along the shore and you can see Alcatraz the whole time. And it's just really cool to be down there. I cut a whole video on this. If you're out there in San Francisco and you're roaming around GGP after you're done hunting up there, you're going to go down to the shore. You're going to go to Fisherman's Wharf and you're going to go to the Golden Gate Bridge. That's where everything is. All right. So, this was, uh, you know, the next part of the solve, which we felt really good about, too. So running north is the 101. So it kind of cuts over, and it's it's headed west, and then it turns north and heads up uh, to the, uh, the uh, Marin County. So this threw us, this is kind of where we got sidetracked, but this is what Kurt found. He found Funston's grave. So look up Twain. Mark Twain, San Francisco. See what Twain was doing there. 
he wasn't playing poker there. Okay, he wasn't doing all these other things that people are trying to tie to Twain. Okay, it, it's unlikely that he's going to work Twain in on some something Twain did 20 years ago or not here in town. So what this was, I think, the biggest thing Twain did when he was there. He had this, you know, sort of uh, takedown of General Funston, and Funston's all over the place. He was a big part. Of, of San Francisco history and his wife. They uh, lived up in the Presidio. He was a decorated general. And some people thought Funston would be Teddy Roosevelt's VP, right? So this era, I don't know. That's it's just a nice coincidence, I think, but it's kind of cool. Funston's tied to Teddy, okay? Um, but Twain basically took Funston down in an article. I think if I'm in here in Denver, Funston was stationed here somewhere, one of the bases, and uh, he wrote this letter to the Denver Post just totally lampooning Funston, and then that just took him down. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's that's definitely one of the things Twain is known for being in San Francisco. So is that nearby? Yeah, it is. Like from Chrissy, you can see this an old, uh, old picture when the 101 was being built. And you just cross right over. Now, you would have gone under the, the uh, highway. Now you go over top of it. So they put in something, you know, in recent years where you just kind of stroll across. So this made sense. Think about the word attention. It, it does have military connotation, does it not? So I think these words are so few words. They are super important. Think about that just for a second. There are so few words in the verse. What the words he's using really matter. If these verses were a hundred, you know, words, two on several hundred words, not as much. But since there's so few, you can, you know, put some chips on these things. So I, I see attention. Wow, that corresponds to what you would do standing at attention, saluting a general. Okay, I think that's a nice tie. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not for you. It is for me. So, yeah, like this would definitely be something he would be interested in, I think, since he took the guy down. In any case, so we got to this point, and this is where we went off track. I kept coming back to, man, I, I'm, we're right. We're right on the verse. And I wouldn't let that go. Um, I just felt it was so solid. But from here is where we ended up getting off track. And I'll show you that. So this is the view, and I can't remember exactly where his grave marker is. I think it's down here. You've got to stop here. Um, and I bet you there's lots of people that live in the area that have never been up here to this cemetery. It is uh, inspiring, beautiful. I don't know. You can see the picture. I mean, I did not want to leave when I was here. So it's really cool. So. When I think about what's Byron doing here in San Francisco, I think it's a highlight tour. This is a city that you're going to have a highlight tour. In. Cleveland, sorry, with all due respect, they're not highlights like this. So it would be such a waste for Byron, because he lived in San Francisco, right, for a while, to not show you all this stuff, all this cool stuff about San Francisco and the history. You don't get that in GGP, okay? as an example, or up in the city. You don't get all this cool stuff that he, I think he'd want to show you about history and military. And then, of course, the world's most iconic bridge. Okay, so this is where we went off track, okay? I think this kind of explains it. So uh, the bridge is up here where I have a lot of confidence. My confidence is very high. Battery Lancaster is it. However, when we're here, you know, we end up this way. And, and here's the reasoning. So we're at the cemetery, and we, we take first a cross in Jules' direction. So we got sort of caught up on that idea. Um, but we don't head north. We actually head a little south. So that didn't make a lot of sense. And this track from here is a mile something. So you, it's the longest part, and it just... Distance-wise, it didn't make a lot of sense because you're bing, bing, bing on the shore, 
Now you take this cut over here, and again, everything's back in the bay. It's it's the bridge and Alcatraz and all that, and views of the city. But we didn't go there, and this is how we got off track really fast. So we felt like you cut through here, and this uh, winding roads, and that really matches the apron again, which I think is Presidio. And then we saw great uh, the sand ladder, which was a great pole, great step, or giant pole, giant step. And we ended up then down here in Chamberlain, okay? Uh, there was Crosby. We investigated that a little bit too. There's only two turrets there. Um, but this was our thinking, you know, is you head down the sand ladder and then boom, you're right here. So that's a mistake. Now, actually what you do is you continue this way through these windy roads into Lancaster's is my opinion. So giant pole, giant step. So this is that sand ladder, really cool. Uh, when I was out here this the very last time at Lancaster, finally, yeah, you know, I, I did some exercise. It's great. It's a great workout. Let's go up here, and it's really cool. Uh, FYI, it is a, a clothing optional area. That you know, there's the kids and families, and then there's the folks in the buff. So just be prepared. Really cool down here, though. It's it's awesome. I highly recommend going down to Baker Beach. So then just a short, you know, like a couple hundred yards maybe is uh, Chamberlain. And sadly, most of these are just in complete disrepair. Now, they're, they're, they did some up near Chrissy. They redid some, you know, they uncovered them and redid them. Looks great. I didn't get to see those weren't open. We were there. Um, but these, you know, it's like, man, it's they're destroyed. And they're so graffitied up. This picture I took, it's awesome. Um, so I think, you know, fundamentally, we had it right. We needed to be at a battery. And there's uh, incredible views down here. Um, but this is where we end up. So this is like the, from the turret closest, uh, so north, closer to the Golden Gate Bridge. And then there's four of them. And then you have the parking lot. This is the one that looked most appealing to us. So this is the second one in, basically, from the sand ladder. And we thought, wow, you've got this, you know, sort of uh, hourglass shape here. But there's problems with this, okay? This uh, pearl is not elevated in this area right here. This is very man-made, in my opinion. This is not natural. This is not, it's it's man-made. This is not here, okay? Um, but so we had this hourglass in the, in the uh, you know, the shrubs, I guess, or the ground to cover. And boy, this looked right. But I will tell you, this area in here, there, there's no gem. So if you think, well, maybe those guys missed it, and I really like this solve, I promise you, beyond the shadow of a doubt, this area does not contain the box. Okay? If it did at one time, it's not there. I promise you. Okay. So, like, this was in our mind. I'm seeing this. I'm seeing the fit. I'm seeing the match. We see this all the time with people on their solves. Gosh, they have this great uh, image match, and they're sold. That was me. And I will tell you, image matches, be extremely careful with those. It's They're probably wrong. Uh, get the verse right. Get the stories right from the fair people. Get all that to match. And then at your spot, have great imagery. Otherwise, you can find a plethora of matches. And this is people like, I see this, and they're fitting it in. Think of all the shapes in the world and the planet that could match what's in these paintings. It's, it's way too easy to get off track. So don't, don't do that. Get all this other stuff right first. All right, so this is what we were missing. So when you look out over Chamberlain, it's an ocean. It's literally looking out in the Pacific. And we weren't getting this. Now, this is what we have at Lancaster. So we're at a battery. But my goodness, if these spires, these stone spires don't match this, it's, I'm not going to say perfect fit. It's damn close. And this is why when we're like, okay, it's not Chambers, it's not Crosby, it's not anything over there on, on the west side. And then we go here and start poking around. The light bulbs go off because we have the imagery. All right, so this, I think, is the spot. At Lancaster, and by the way, this view with the bridge and the fort underneath it looks exactly like what you see at Von Briesen Park in New York. 
So we put these solves together independently and they we feel good about them. And then this whole bookend idea comes up. And we're like, mm, are they similar? Frick, yeah, they are. <laughs> They're spot on. I've showed you guys this and maybe some people believe it. But this was Len's credence to this spot, Lancaster versus Chamberlain. Because we have the imagery. Plain and simple. A lot of it. All right, so I've talked to you guys about this, the GGP solve. Like, if you feel good about Fisherman's Wharf, you're going to cut five miles through the city to get to GGP. And there's nothing up here, really. I mean, it's a city park. You wouldn't know somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. You wouldn't really know if there's anything special about it. The shoreline solve goes from Fisherman's to Gardelli, up to Chrissy, over to the cemetery, and then to the bridge. Gosh, man, it's so easy. You see Alcatraz the whole time. Beautiful views of the bay. You don't get that up here. Same thing with Chamberlain. So, you know, even the portico up here, this is a battery 129. And I think you've got a dual representation of the arch, which is extremely historic. Look it up. This arch was put in to save the fort. So this is very Mason-like, stone-like. I think that's the fort under here. But visually from the dig site, I mean, look at this one to this one. <laughs> Show me another spot in San Francisco where you get this. And so you look through these, and up in the distance is this, you know, other, uh, you know, it's a mountain, and you've got a portico up there. It's Battery 129, look it up. I don't know. I'm sold. It can't get me off of Lancaster. Show me a spot in GGP that it remotely resembles these stone spires that you see. So again, that's why we were wrong in Chamberlain. So I'm going to walk you through some of the photos and just talk about the actual operation now. So this was actually Crosby, which is next door. So we even looked there because they're like, eh, Chamberlain, eh, no, maybe it's up here because we loved the views of the bridge and that. But again, you just, you know, we're like, oh, maybe those stone spires or what's back here? Not really. I mean, they're just mountains and they don't have that same look and feel. All right. So I don't know. Hopefully I haven't lost yet. All right. So these are the photos. Let's walk through. Oops. I got one. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right. So this is Chamberlain. So one of the things we did is we're looking at pictures and then there's not a lot of pictures out there. Chamberlain, it's a you know, it's kind of an everyday battery for San Francisco, and it's in complete disrepair. So we saw this. We're like, oh, this thing closes. It's only open like certain times of the year. Total BS. I mean, this is open. It never closes. This fence is falling down everywhere. But we thought, hmm, if we're going to go in there, let's say after hours and do some poking around, we're going to have to hop this fence. No. You will not have to hop to fence. This thing's open. You can walk through here 24-7. So it's kind of like at one point, I think when these were a lot nicer and, and well kept in that, they were they didn't want people in here at night, like falling into pits and stuff. Now they don't care. All right. So this was a look, you know, over top. These things are really awesome. Go and look. I'm not a huge military buff. I'm interested in history and military. I think it's really cool. Um, I've never been to these things. And yeah, I'd like to think about folks stationed here and firing off these massive guns into the ocean. It's just, it's really cool. But you can see tons of graffiti. It gets worse than this. Really cool. I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, go and experience this. Okay, so this is like the fence falling down. And we didn't know that till we were there. So this is the whole boots on the ground idea. So basically, I flew in, did some recon, and then Kurt flew in, and then we poked around. Uh, but this was our first, you know, I did I did uh, Charleston by myself. And that was really getting my feet wet, getting all the equipment, and learned a lot on that too. And that helped here, certainly, because I had all the equipment. But in terms of the actual logistics of running a, an operation, okay, got to have at least two people. And the reason is you need a lookout. All right, so this is, there's a trail that kind of winds its way down and you just see these awesome views. And you can really see those, you know, four turrets. So here's a parking lot over here. Um, we actually parked up on the hill 
and then you know came down we didn't want to park in the slot plus this lot closes so i think all the crime and like bad stuff that people do they close the parking lot now as it turns out um we had a incident where the 50 the national park police came down into the lot late at night while we're hanging around and that causes some concern let's say all right so there's me happy to be there uh so you can see you're totally graffiti up you can't get in here there's uh, you know they have it locked up but some at some point people were in there tearing it up i don't know why they like to go in and beat the crap out of these areas they do but you can see again this sort of angular a shape it's just really cool um the doors where the artillery stored okay so then again there's our spot right in there because we got this visual match so this is looking the other way where's the stone spires in that that you see in the painting not here so although this looks so appealing and it's a fit visually and we're below a battery and all these cool things and directionally we have all these things that fit we're missing the imagery at the site so this is because where the guns used to be it's and then this is the eye right when you start you came to these we knew like yeah those eyes are batteries they are the turrets gosh they just look like eyes don't they so there's me down at fisherman's wharf uh, doors so there's kurt coming in he's standing over the spot that we liked um so what i want to show you here uh so the day one operation we go in there and we're both in this area late and then we see flashing lights in the parking lot so we take off and it turns out they weren't after it i don't think they care they, they don't they don't care that anybody's down there um, as far as we can tell uh, but so we're in there we see these flashing lights come down i think someone was in the parking lot and they were investigating that so we take off um the second day what we did right is like one guy would come down and investigate this area the other guys planted up here right so we can see we've got all this cover up here we blend in we can see across the whole battery to the parking lot and we can see up here where the road you can't see it here the road winds down right so we got a lookout so we have early warning like hey get out and there were a few times we had to do that um, but that was key so we have walkie talkies i think we're using our phones but one guy sitting up here with eyes the other guy's doing stuff okay that is super crucial so when you're doing an operation you must have a lookout in my opinion unless you just don't care that other people are seeing what you're doing or there's no threats of people coming and busting you all right so this was cool this is down in fisherman's wharf it's like yeah i'm gonna get one of these pearls we didn't but it was kind of cool to see that and that's just the funston stuff i already showed you yeah so this is the view like when it's a little clear out i mean we are just sold on this area because it's just stunning down there at the beach um, so this is up at Ghirardelli, and then, you know, there was this signage. So I think this is important, too, when you go boots on the ground. You see these signs that they have, and maybe you pick some stuff up. Um, so this was, you know, you are here. So this is uh, that Larkin Street, where you see down Ghirardelli, and then three posts high, and Alcatraz. Why make it harder than that, folks? So this was the view at night. This was pitch black, and then the samsung phone cameras you know just do such a great job this night vision and so it kind of looks like a painting almost but um <clears throat> so it's totally pitch black and it picks all this up but we're down by this pole kind of right there and um yeah, this is really fun all right so this is looking the other way at night um across the battery down on the beach so we ended up on that first night when we were running from the 5-0 uh Kurt ends up down on these rocks here and he, you know, almost dies. He skins his knee up and I think he still has scars from it. And so we split up. We didn't want to head up the sand ladder because we saw some flashing lights. I think that was a sign though. It wasn't the 5-0. So I had the other way down the beach. <laughs> and then I, there were some kids there with a, having a bonfire and they directed me to be able to get out of there um, down the other end of, of Baker. 
and then we convened and I ended up forgetting my phone in the car so I couldn't call Kurt. It was bad. All right, and this is just more of the view. So then the next day we go and start investigating the, um, you know, oh gosh, I always forget the name of this place. It's down uh, on the waterfront there, the uh, arts, fine arts area. Two, uh, two manicured and there's not not a really good place although when you look from the top this thing looks like a pearl and that tripped us up for a little while but why stop there when the bridge is really close from here so this is the site after our work and you want to talk about leave no trace if these folks knew what this area looked like let's say six eight hours prior they wouldn't have believed it so you couldn't tell at all that anything had been done here. So then, you know, then we're moving our way up the shore, trying to look at other batteries. And like, we, again, we're just stuck on this battery. There were so many matches there um, that confirmed battery. So we're looking at all these. And you see they're all graffiti. up. This is closer to the bridge. I forget which one. Cranston, maybe. And this is the lookout. We thought, oh, maybe it's the lookout because we have this roundedness like we see. But this is put in in like 2012 or something. Now, this is iconic to look through these cypress trees. The bridge is right here. But, you know, again, the fog. Uh, yeah, Cranston. So you pick up little things here uh, on these signs. So it's great to go boots on the ground. So the views, again, just really cool from here. And this is the bad, you know, they're all graffitied up and falling apart. And this is Kurt up here. It's panoramic view. It's, I mean, it's so beautiful there. You, you realize why people like this area. So then I go down, so he leaves, and I go down to China Beach. I'm just like, oh, China Beach. It's too far away from everything. And Legion, the, uh, the Legion area right near here, just too far away, especially if you start in, in uh, the wharf, in Fisherman's Wharf. So... China Beach is completely destroyed. They're redoing it, which is great. But I think they just let it completely fall into disrepair. So we're like, crap, if it's down here, it's gone because they're ripping the whole thing up. You can see it's a mess, absolute mess. And I, I'm hoping that you know, it certainly doesn't become this once they fix it all up. But I think they're bulldozing all this and going to start new. So then I start looking. You know, for whatever reason, on this trip, I didn't go to Lancaster. I didn't go to the other side by the bridge. I don't know why. So I'm up. These are those, uh, this is the military housing that you notice. It looks very um, scale-like that we think is the representation in the painting. And then this is the battery. This is Winston, I think. Um, so this is up near those ball fields. And yeah, there's there were batteries here, but they're completely overgrown. And nothing is in here. They have it like roped off even. All right, so this is where we parked. We parked up here, and then we took these trails down to the battery. So this is housing up here, and we didn't have any problem dropping in and doing that. So this is just part of scoping it out and try to figure out operationally, logistically, how are we going to do this? We did not want to go down in this park, and then there's cameras and stuff down there. So we didn't want any part of that. This is then up again by Winston and... So again, all I all I needed to, needed to do on this trip is go around the bend. I didn't under the bridge, um, but you can see this area. They've turned it into it's a storage. I think they're like, well, we can't get rid of these things, but they're not useful, so they're turning into like storage. It's it's kind of weird. Completely beat up, graffitied. Um, again, more signage. So, yeah, the headlands and, and here's the fort. And you just can pick up stuff, I think, from these signs. So it takes some time, right? So this is where we should have ended up. Um, and we think it's it's down in here. You know, it, there's some uh, reference points with the roundhouse. And then the view, this is the, you know, the stone spires here on the bridge. This is the fort. Okay, so this is where, you know, we think you end up. So in, in researching, again, Lancaster's over here. This was a really old photo, um, but it's nice and clear, and it shows you, um, you know, what was going on in this area way back when. You can see all the batteries here. And uh, again, this is all storage. And so this, this was probably like the 30s or 40s maybe. But you really see the clear, how the snake-like uh, scales and what's happened. So this area, right, the Lancaster area, uh, it's been 
changed and, and, and bulldozed and replanted and bulldozed. And there used to be a fence down there and massive changes. There were uh, dirt paths that they made, you know, back in 12, I think they put in uh, real concrete paths and stuff. So I put this in my other videos, you know, just how much the area's changed. So if this is right, and I don't see how it can't be with the imagery for sure, man, good luck. I, I highly doubt it's in there because it's changed so much. Um, just from when Byron was there. Okay, so yeah, I got one more here for you, this overhead. Yeah, so there's the roundhouse, and down here, you know, you can look back, all these old pictures, this area's changed, and sadly, I think that's where we're at on a lot of these boxes. Uh, but in any case, hopefully, this failed operation helped you. I mean, I would I go and do this operation? You better believe it. It was a ton of fun. So get out there poke around, maybe dig some holes and, and have some fun with this thing. Uh, talk to you guys soon.